and he showed me his own MRIs and x-ray of his own knees and how they're completely screwed up, but he has no pain. Then we should see that the people in the group who got the real surgery should get much better results, right? Like their knee pain should be much better. They should just, everything should be better. Range of motion, all kinds of metrics should be better for the people who got the real surgery. Today, we're gonna to be talking about knee meniscus tears and knee pain and what you should do if you have a knee meniscus tear. This is from a totally non-medical perspective, but we're gonna look at medical research to arrive at this non-medical conclusion. We're also going to be talking about the story of a guy named Pedro who lives in Portugal and his story with knee meniscus tears and what his doctor told him. And we're going to look at a little bit of the research so you understand why the idea of knee meniscus tears and knee pain and knee surgery going all together as one wonderful trifecta may not be so good. So let's start off first with you. You might have knee pain and you might have been told that you have a knee meniscus tear and maybe your knee locked up. I've been there. I've actually had my knee lock up really bad the same way while doing some heavy lifting. And you may have been told that the only solution to this knee meniscus tear problem is to get surgery to fix it because surgery is the only way to fi fix a torn meniscus. Implicit in this is that the knee meniscus tear is the thing that is causing the pain and is causing your range of motion issues. Now you would then think that there is ample evidence that connects knee meniscus tears and actual symptoms like pain and immobility. You would also think that there are a lot of studies that show that surgery for knee meniscus tears is effective and resolves the pain and gets you your range of motion and full strength back. You would be surprised though to find out that there are actually no studies that show that meniscus tears are related to knee pain and knee dysfunction. There may, might sometimes be some small correlation, but in fact, tons of people, very high percentages of people, walk around with knee meniscus tears with zero symptoms. It's called asymptomatic meniscus tear because meniscus tears can be in people's knees for years and years and years or decades and cause abs absolutely no problems. I will provide links in the description box down below. In addition, you're now thinking, well, okay, let's say that that's true. Let's say that meniscus tears don't cause knee pain. Well, why is it that knee surgeries for meniscus tears are so effective at getting rid of knee pain? That's a great question. The problem is that there have been studies that looked at knee meniscus tear surgeries and they've actually compared those real surgeries to fake surgeries. So what they do is they take two groups and they say, okay, you guys, you guys have knee pain, you have knee meniscus tears. We are going to fix your knees. One group is gonna get the real deal surgery to fix your meniscus tear. The second group is gonna get a fake surgery. Nobody's going to know who's in what group, okay? So if you're in the fake surgery group, they're still going to knock you out, all right? Still going to go through all of the song and dance of a real surgery. They're going to put you to sleep, wake you back up. There's going to be some small little incisions as if you got the real thing. And then the other people get the real thing. And guess what they found? If in fact knee meniscus surgery is super effective and, and advisable, then we should see that the people in the group who got the real surgery should get much better results, right? Like their knee pain should be much better. They should just, everything should be better. Range of motion, all kinds of metrics should be better for the people who got the real surgery. Unfortunately, what we find is that the two groups are basically the same, like within one or two percentage points, uh, the same. And they've done these studies and shown, whoops, the surgeries, the, the real surgeries are only as effective as the fake surgery. So is the surgery doing what we think it's doing? And the answer is obviously no, it's not because the fake surgery is not doing the same thing as the real surgery other than making people think they got the best care possible, right? And so what you find is, okay, maybe none of this makes sense. If you can't show a correlation, a strong correlation between knee meniscus tears and pain, and you can't show a strong correlation between the real surgery and improvement in symptoms, then you have a real problem. The bigger problem though is that uh, surgeries like knee meniscus tear surgery um, generate a lot of revenue for surgeons, anesthesiologists, 
Hospitals, in particular, get most of their revenue from doing elective procedures. So there's not a whole lot of incentive to stop procedures like this that have a very questionable research behind them and produce very questionable, at least unpredictable results. And of course, surgeons who specialize in these will say stuff like, well, you just need a more uh, experienced surgeon to guarantee better results. But uh, that's literally unscientific, pseudoscientific garbage. So let's talk about a story um, from Pedro in Portugal. He said, hey, I just want to take one second to say a big thank you to Anne SF for the $50 donation via YouTube Super Thanks. Thank you for supporting my channel. If you want to support this channel too, you can use the Super Thanks button or the Join button here on YouTube, or you can go to uprighthealth.com slash donate, where you can see all the super simple, easy options to support this channel. I really appreciate it. While you're there, go to uprighthealth.com to find yourself a free course to help you rebuild your body at home. Again, uprighthealth.com, get it. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. Now let's get back to the video. He says, I tore all my menisci, small tears, but degenerative tear. So supposedly they would get worse. Several doctors told me to get surgery. Even the top knee doctor here in Portugal uh, advised me to get surgery. I finally went to a general practitioner who's a doctor for several family members. And this is awesome. And he showed me his own MRIs and x-ray of his own knees and how they're completely screwed up, but he has no pain. He told me the tears would heal. Thank God I listened to him because they did and I never needed surgery whatsoever. Needless to say, he is my current doctor and I always go to him for a second opinion. So that's an awesome story. I don't, it's interesting. One part here is he says that the tears would heal. I don't know that the tears do heal. I, I haven't seen anything about the tears actually healing, but it is clear though that the tears and your pain and your symptoms don't necessarily correlate. So whatever is actually causing the pain is probably not the tear. So I think another way to put this that would be definitely accurate without wading into waters that are a little too murky is to say that the pain and the discomfort can get better, can heal, can go away, despite you're still having the meniscus tear. And that's the case here for Pedro. That's the case for all the participants in those knee meniscus placebo surgery trials. People who have knee meniscus tears can make their knee pain go away, but it doesn't require surgery. Um, and the surgery itself, whether real or fake, well, it's, I think, it, I think the number was 41 or 42, 43% effective, something like that. Anyway, I'll drop a link in the description box on that. And then finally, my own personal story. When I was squatting, this was maybe eight years ago at this point, I was doing some heavy barbell squats. And as I was trying to come up, my knee popped audible, terrible, horrifying pop. And I managed to get up but I could no longer bend my knee. Like I could not bend my knee. I couldn't squat anymore. I could only get like about, it was probably maybe 20 to 30 degrees. What I found was that if I actually could get my tibia to internally rotate, I could make the pain go away and I could get full range of motion again. So I was looking at my body and thinking, well, how do I get more internal rotation in my tibia? And the answer was, oh, wait, I, I can stretch my lateral hamstrings that's going to take off some of the tension on my tibia, right? So the lateral hamstrings will, uh, if this is my knee, lateral hamstrings come down on the outside. This is my left knee, right? And they'll pull and rotate out that way, right? It'll rotate your tibia out to the side, which creates external rotation, which would make my knee hurt. So what I started doing was stretching out the lateral hamstring and that would reduce some of that external rotation and then I could bend again. So it took about three weeks, but I kept hammering away at that. And then I was able to squat again. I was able to actually get full range of motion again. And it was really eye-opening because this was, it was unbelievably, not unbelievably painful. Like I couldn't walk. I was having a lot of trouble walking, getting in and out of bed, putting on shoes, doing whatever. Like this was bad. And if I had gone to see the doctor and said, hey, heard a loud pop, something felt like it went squished in my knee, and I can't bend my knee anymore, well, what's the diagnosis very likely going to be? Who knows if it's torn? I never bothered to get it 
uh, MRI. Who knows if it was torn already? Who knows if both my knees are torn? Most likely, given my athletic history as an ice hockey and roller hockey goalie, my meniscus on both sides is probably torn, but it doesn't bother me because my muscles are balanced around the joint. So the lesson here again is knee pain, knee meniscus tears, not actually related, knee surgery and relief of knee pain, also not related. Well, I mean, just as related as with fake knee surgery. So maybe the better choice here is to do something with the muscles around the knee rather than rush to start cutting things up and commit to surgeries that are extremely expensive, but really good for the bottom line of everybody involved in providing that surgery. That's my opinion. I wonder what your opinion is. You can drop a comment down below. Keep it respectful, respectful, please, please. Please, I know this is the internet, but let's let's be respectful. Uh, and description box will have links to some juicy research articles for you to peruse at your leisure. Uh, if you want more videos to help you with your knees, then I encourage you to check out the description box, and I'll probably link them uh, somewhere on screen here. And subscribe for more videos like this and for videos to help you with your knee pain. And I invite you to go to uprighthealth.com to get a free course called Body Rebuilding Basics that'll help you explode all the myths that well-meaning health practitioners will bombard you with that will keep you in pain and keep your body hurting and keep your body dysfunctional. It'll also give you a bunch of free workouts that you can use at home. They're simple follow along workouts that you can use to massage your body, increase your squat depth, be able to touch your toes and, in, and improve your posture. There's all kinds of good things. So please go check it out. And as always, I hope you remember that pain sucks. Life shouldn't.